What is the universe made of? It's one of the most difficult questions we have about our world. Every object you've seen in your entire life, your computer, your car, your body, is built from three simple ingredients, protons, neutrons, and electrons. These same three particles also make up the sun, the moon, the planets, and the stars. Everything. So where did they come from? And how did they get here? It all started 14 billion years ago with an event called the Big Bang. The Big Bang theory suggests that all matter in the universe was contained in a single point. After the initial expansion, the universe cooled enough to allow the formation of subatomic particles including protons, neutrons, and electrons. The result was a universe consisting of gas only, about 70% hydrogen and the rest helium. There were no stars and no planets. Eventually, large gas balls formed pressurizing and heating up on the inside. Finally, the core got so hot, there was a blast of nuclear fusion. Hydrogen atoms smashed together to form helium, followed by an explosion of energy. When the outward explosion finally found a happy medium with the gravity pulling inward, the forces reached a kind of equilibrium. The result? A star is born. Over its lifetime, explosions in a star's core produce helium as well as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and other elements in the periodic table up to iron. But eventually, the star's core runs out of fuel and collapses, blowing to bits in an incredibly powerful explosion called a supernova. The release of so much energy creates a fusion frenzy forming elements with atoms even heavier than iron, like silver, gold, and uranium. All the elements from the supernova start mixing with the gas. Then the process repeats itself. Gas clouds, now containing many elements, form new stars. After the creation of our sun, the remaining dusty mixture swirled around, fanning out into a disk. Over time, the sun grew in size, and the dusty disk cooled. Over millions of years, the dust clustered into pebbles, then rocks, and eventually chunks of boulders big enough to have their own gravitational field. Slowly, these rocky planet embryos began to organize themselves, settling at a comfortable distance from the sun and finding their own orbit. In the early days, pileups were common, leaving craters on the planet's surfaces. One of these collisions, about four and a half billion years ago, is probably responsible for our moon. A small planet gave Earth a glancing blow pitching a clump of Earth's crust out into space. The ejected chunk started its own orbit around Earth and became our moon. You bet there is. Space is not nothing. Space has amazing properties, some of which we are only beginning to understand. Our universe may contain 100 billion galaxies, each with billions of stars and possibly scads of planets and moons. Yet everything that we can see is like the tip of the cosmic iceberg. It accounts for only about 4% of the total mass and energy in the universe. 
In the 1930s, while studying the outer regions of our galaxy, the Milky Way, astronomers discovered a strange kind of mass. The Milky Way is shaped like a gigantic disk. The stars all orbit the center of the galaxy. Yet when astronomers measured stars all across the galaxy, they found that they all orbit the center at about the same speed. Something outside the galaxy seemed to have its own gravity and was influencing the orbiting stars. They called it dark matter. It turns out the vast halo of dark matter surrounding the Milky Way is 10 times larger than the galaxy it surrounds. And about 21% of the universe consists of dark matter. The common belief was that the gravity inherent in all that dark matter should be strong enough to slow down expansion. In 1998, Hubble Space Telescope observations showed that the expansion of the universe has not been slowing down due to gravity. In fact, it has been accelerating. Was some anti-gravity force at work and causing the rapid expansion of the universe? The astronomers believed so, and they called it dark energy. Dark matter and dark energy were both forged in the Big Bang. But in fact, they are competing forces. Dark matter attracts, while dark energy repels. So what is dark energy anyway? We're not entirely sure. But if Vegas were taking bets, the odds would favor a concept known as vacuum energy. The theory says that pairs of particles are constantly popping into existence throughout the universe. They consist of one particle with a negative charge and one with a positive charge. They exist for only a tiny fraction of a second before they collide and annihilate Energy seems to be pushing outward on space itself. In the early universe, all the matter was packed much more densely than and gravity was the dominant force, slowing down, slowing down the acceleration. The worse gets, the more dark energy it creates. is how much we still have to learn about the universe. Dark energy and dark matter are terms that represent the unknown. They are, phrase they are phrases that simply mean we don't know. When we do find out, it could fundamentally change our understanding of the universe, time, and the origin of life itself.